this has kind of caught the internet by storm this week, and you may not have you may not have seen what was going on because it's kind of in another space. But this does have a lot of overlap, I think, with what happens in the sewing industry and the sewing community. And that is why I wanted to get into it. So if you have not heard, I'll bring up this article and it's linked in the description box as well. I want to bring up this article and talk about it and really get into what this means for content and for uh, social media. All right, so this article is from Morning Brew, and it says, Can a product review be too harsh? Some say star product review YouTuber Marquez Brownlee was too hard on Humane's AI pin. So I'm going to go through the article, and then we'll get into what that means for us, because this does have, I think, a lot of... It res I think it can resonate a lot with us as well. All right. So it says, this article is by Sam Klebanov, a futuristic AI-powered wearable that aims to help humanity kick its smartphone addiction, was about as critically acclaimed as the restaurants on Kitchen Nightmares. Okay, that's a funny starting line. But the AI pin, billed as a screenless assistant by the much-hyped startup Humane, got people talking after its evisceration by the famously straight-shooting product review guru, Marquez Brownlee, a.k.a. MKBHD. In a video titled, The Worst Product I've Ever Reviewed, For Now, which received over 6 million views, he praised the gadget's sleek design and clever charging system, but criticized everything else, from its inconsistent battery life to its inability to sync with a smartphone. But then the YouTuber himself got a thumbs down in the form of a viral X post from former Amazon Web Services engineer Daniel Vassallo, who accused Brownlee of chasing clicks at Humane's expense and called the video's title distasteful, almost unethical. Brownlee pushed back, saying that he was simply doing his job of educating viewers about a product before they shell out $699 plus a $24 monthly subscription fee for it. The back and forth stirred up a conversation about what reviewers owe to their audiences and the companies whose products they feature. Here's an unboxing of that discourse. Anti-humane rhetoric accusation. Vassalo's main complaint seems to be that someone with Brownlee's reach could undermine a plucky upstart on the bleeding edge of the AI revolution, like Humane, by trashing its first product. Vassalo maintained that Brownlee's 18 million YouTube followers obligated him to be mindful of how his choice of words could harm a company. He claimed that Brownlee chose the sensationalist video title to do maximum damage, though he later clarified to TechCrunch that he found the review itself fair and balanced. Other tech industry veterans agreed. Entrepreneur Alex Kerr said that the review was devastating to the, for the future of Humane, as it'll destroy sales. Tech influencer Alex Finn also wrote that Brownlee used his immense influence to erect the company's gravestone. Indeed, Humane was banking on its smartphone supplanter being a hot commodity, after it raised $230 million in venture capital funding and expected to sell 100,000 pins in the first year. This isn't the first time a company's misfortunes have been pinned on Brownlee's panning. Some think his recent review of the Fisker Ocean SUV, this is the worst car I've ever reviewed, is a reason the EV startup is on the brink of bankruptcy. Review are not responsible. MKBHD replied to the charge that he's a company valuation destroyer with a follow-up video in which he stated that it's not bad reviews but bad products that drive companies out of business. Brownlee reminded viewers that Fisker was already in dire straits and known to be at risk of getting delisted from the New York Stock Exchange before he reviewed the car. He claimed that negative reviews can only accelerate the demise of a company not precipitate, precipitate it. Also not salty about the AI pin review, Humane itself. The company's head of new media, Sam Sheffer, said MKBHD's critiques were fair and valid, 
while assuring that the startup was listening and learning. Plus, MKBHD's defenders pointed out that he's just one voice in a chorus of AI pin haters. Other prominent YouTubers engaged in similar clickable dunking on the product, and most tech sites agreed that it was more of a glitchy gimmick than a game changer. Fellow tech analysts like Ben Thompson contend that MKBHD has no obligations to anyone other than his trusting audience, the greatest source of his power. Big picture, since a large chunk of the product reviews on e-commerce sites are considered unreliable or even sponsored by sellers, many shoppers are increasingly counting on the level-headed input of vloggers like MKBHD, which raises their profile as well as questions about their responsibilities. So I saw this kind of going down on X this week, and there were a lot of good questions that were brought up about uh, product reviews and, like, basically it's like, should you be should you be nice about them? Should you have any uh, duty to be, you know, give the company that makes the, these products the benefit of the doubt? And there were other questions, too, about whether uh, Marquez kind of went too far with uh, the title of his video. So I'll show you the video here. All right, let me just... Uh, well, here was his follow-up video. So, but let me show you the... Let me show you the actual video. Let's see here. And I will say, I... I'm not super into, like, tech YouTube... Uh, but I've watched enough of Marquez's content uh, to to say that I think he's a very, I think he's somebody you should, as, if you're going to be a content creator who does reviews and talks about products, I think he's definitely someone you should aspire to be like. I think his reviews are very fair. They're very well researched. He puts a lot of thought into the content. He really tests them out and he gives I think very like very authentic reviews and I really appreciate him as a creator. I think his videos are amazing. I think he's an awesome YouTuber and I think he's someone that you could you could see uh, he seems trustworthy and he's someone that really does seem to be creating the content in good faith and not just for clicks, not just for views. Um, it's pretty obvious that this is someone that genuinely wants to create a uh, good content. All right, so here is MKBHD's channel here. Okay, so, and he's been doing YouTube for, like, ever. Um, he started doing it when he was a kid, and, like, literally, he's, like, 12 years old or so. I think he's in his 20s. He's a pretty young guy. And what I really appreciate about him is that he's become one of the foremost tech reviewers. Uh, you know, he has as much clout as, like, a, like a major media publication at, at this point. He's got 18.7 million subscribers. And this is... All right, so this... This is the video he did. Uh, so it was called The Worst Product I've Ever Reviewed for Now. And so this is... It was this like wearable AI pin. Apparently it kind of sucks and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It's 700 bucks. And it's like, it's got a $24 a month subscription, which is a fairly expensive. So this is the review. So it now has about 6.5 uh, million views. And here's the thing. So the title is called The Worst Product I've Ever Reviewed uh, for Now. So is this something that is going to be enticing to click on? Absolutely. But at the same time, he's a YouTuber. Like, this is, like... I would say this, I don't think it's clickbait if your video delivers on the promise of the video title and the thumbnail. It's clickbait if the video has nothing to do with what you, like, if this, if, if his title said, like, the worst product on earth, and then you clicked on it, and it was a really great product, you'd be like, this is very misleading. But he really genuinely believes that this is, like, the worst product is reviewed. So is I think as long as he's being honest about his real opinions, I don't have a problem with that title at all. And he also did a follow-up video after all of this, like, you know, after, like, 
all of the commotion over his video, he did a follow-up video uh, called Do Review Do Bad Reviews Kill Companies. And he had a lot of good points in here, and I actually agree. Like, I pretty much agree with everything in his video. I have linked his video down below in the description box if you want to check it out. I've also linked uh, another guy named Asmund Gold who reacted to his reaction video. And um, so he points out a few things in, in these videos that I just think I want to touch on. So he was asking, well, so first of all, I want to say that he's at a fairly large level. So it's hard to like, okay, so he's at the level where he has a huge amount of, he's a huge audience. He's millions and millions of people. He's also at the level where he can afford to purchase products he reviews, but he also has the leverage to push back on companies. So when you're starting out and you're like a smaller influencer, you're a smaller content creator, you either have to purchase products yourself to review, or you could try to get a company to send you products you're probably not going to get a sponsored, you're probably not going to get a lot of sponsored videos if you only have like 2,000 YouTube subscribers or something. Uh, but at his level, he not only now has enough revenue where he could easily purchase anything he wants to review, but he's going to get companies, massive companies like Apple or this company to just send him stuff. And he has the leverage that he can accept it like, he can just say, hey, you can send me stuff, but you get, like, there are no guarantees. And I think that's a good position to be in. And I think that it's often creators like Marquez Brownlee who have such a massive reach and have a lot of leverage that can also be in the best position to do honest reviews. Because, like, these companies that are making the products and want to get their products into his hands... Um, they know he's probably getting a lot of stuff sent to him, and they also know that he can tell them to kick rocks, but they want, like, even if he said, like, I'm, you know, I want to say whatever I want about the product, they would still send it anyways, just on the off chance he features it because it's such a massive publicity opportunity, massive marketing for every company that gets featured by him because he's so big in this space. I gotta get some water real quick. So, he says in his follow-up video, uh, do bad reviews kill companies? He talks about his origins, and he actually started off his YouTube journey by reviewing products and by showing people how to use products. And he says he makes reviews for viewers he does not make review videos for companies and for brands and he also points out that if a review isn't honest it's useless and I agree with this if you are doing a review and you can't actually say what you really think of the product because you're afraid of hurting the brand or you're afraid of stepping on toes then how valuable is that review if you are not saying, if you're not keeping it 100. So, yeah. If, if you can't keep it 100, then it's not, you are you might as well just not put out the content. All right, let's read some comments real quick, and then we'll, I, I, have, I have a lot of thoughts on this, but let's read your comments as well. Okay. Uh, independent product reviews are key. Yes, influencers who are. Yeah. I follow Marquez Brownlee. He seems to do honest reviews. Exactly. Sounds like the companies that get bad reviews are blaming Marquez for their crappy products. Right, Lisa? Exactly. I'm fine with the title. It reflects his opinion and experience. And yeah, and he was, here's the thing. He wasn't the only one that had these experiences. He actually said the behind the scenes, he was in contact with other tech tubers asking if, like, he's like, maybe it's just me. And he found out through the grapevine that a lot of other people were having the same issues with this AI pin that he was. So it wasn't just him. The product has a lot of issues. And when you're selling somebody a $700 wearable AI pin, you know, I think these tech tubers do have 
a responsibility to their viewers to be 100% and be honest and be transparent because that's a lot of money to spend on some freaking wearable AI pin, right? This is very interesting. Consumers need independent reviews to fairly evaluate whether a product is for them or not. Exactly. So, yeah. I remember when Andy Rooney did a product review on a 60 Minutes segment. He proved the product did not work as advertised and the company sued him. Andy won. Yes. They sent the product to him and he tried it out and gave his honest opinion. And that, you know what? That's what people should be doing. That is what people should be doing. Yep. When influencers receive some type of benefit from a company to push their product, the consumer does not receive a fair review. Thank you, Nancy. It's one reason I love to listen to you, Jen. You maintain your independence. I wish more people did. I consider reviews where you receive a benefit from the company to all be tainted and worthless. People crave honest reviews. And look, I know I might ruffle some feathers by some of my opinions on this because a lot of other influencers in this space, again, it's it's kind of a conflict of interest and they're going to be like, oh no, it's totally fine. I, I don't agree with that. I think, okay, <laughs> Okay, oh, my hubby has an AI pin coming. I hope it's not that humane one, so it'll be interesting to see how it works. So in this video, Marquez, so he talks about how if the review is not honest, it's worthless. And he, seriously, I think he is at the point where he can do what he wants because he's at such a big level that the companies producing these products can't ignore him and they're still going to send him free products just regardless, you know, because they want to get it, you know, they want to get it to him. So he has kind of an interesting situation. And he also says that when he is creating content, again, you know, he doesn't really think about the company because the review is not for the company. The review is for his audience and his viewers. And, I just really check out this video and also check out the review to the to the reaction to the reaction uh, by this guy Asmund Gold because I thought he had some good thoughts too. I know this is like a reaction to the review follow up and Asmund Gold talks about how a lot of people that review products have, in his opinion, have been like compromised, like they've been they're being paid by the companies to review these products, and in my opinion. That's not an actual review. So I, I've linked both of these videos. Highly encourage you to check them out, even though you might not be in the tech space. I think both of them had some really interesting uh, points to make about content creation and making review videos or making videos where you're giving opinions on like products or services. So here's my, all right, here's, and I will say this, and you, I have had these stances for quite a while, and I'm not going to be changing them, but this is definitely, again, I've been a content creator for about six years. I make a lot less money because of the type of content I do. That's just a fact. Because it's hard for, it's very hard for me to do sponsorships or do, like, collaborations because a lot of the brands I encounter in the sewing industry don't want to they don't want to create authentic content they want me to create a commercial for the brand that's disguised as content and that's the issue I've run into a lot over the years uh, so I'm going to be talking about that because I have a lot of I have a lot of gripes with the way influencer marketing has affected sewing content online. And yeah, I will be, if you have any questions about it, leave them in the chat or leave them in the comments because I have some, I've got some unpopular opinions and I've had some other influencers reach out to me and they were mad, they were definitely not happy with what I've been talking about. Um, I've had some of them be like, I get products for free all the time and I'm always 100%, I'm like, right, right. Okay there. So. Here's my thoughts. If the company has any input or involvement in the content itself, it's not a review. It's just not. So when I'm doing reviews on products, I try to make sure that my experience as a customer 
is the same or is the close to being the same as a regular customer as I as possible. So that means, and again, I've, I have this on the work with me page on sewingreport.com. I've had this policy in place for about six years because early on in my, you know, YouTube journey, I had a couple pretty negative experiences with companies. So here are my official policies. I do not do paid product reviews, paid service reviews, and I, I have a very hard time accepting free products at this point. And I'll tell these companies, if they reach out and they offer to send me a free product, I say, hey, you can send it what you want, but I have absolutely no obligation you will not get any input on the content. You will, you know, you're not even going to know if I make content. Like, I'm not going to update you. I'm not going to be like, yeah, I'm planning a video. If you want to send something, you can send it. But just know there are absolutely no guarantees. I can say whatever I want about the product. There is no guarantee. Like, a lot of, what a lot of content creators do is the brand will send them a product in exchange for making content. So even though... It's not a direct sponsorship. This influencer is accepting the product on the condition that they will make content. And if a brand tries to send me stuff, I say, there is absolutely no deal here. Like, there's no conditions. So if you're going to send me anything, you know, you're welcome to, but like, there's out, like, you get nothing from me. Like, there's no, you know, like you get nothing. So it's up to you if you want to send it. And again, I think that's probably what a lot of companies do with, I, I don't know his business um, model, but I'm going to guess that Marquez does something very similar, especially since he has 18 million subscribers. Companies are going to send him stuff all day long. They because And that's the thing, he has the leverage that he can call those shots. And I do feel like with the main Sewing Report channel, I'm at least at the level, I think... Once I got to like 50,000 subscribers, that was like the tipping point I felt like where I could push back and say, hey, you're welcome to send this. But again, no guarantees. I get a lot of offers and, you know, I don't feature everything. Again, I can say whatever I want. You know, you have no control over the content. So if you're comfortable with that, send it to me. And I'll say this. After I write, like, a lot of these companies I don't even respond to because the products look so shady. I'm like, no. But if a company does, if it like, so I will only really correspond to like companies I've heard of, companies with a rep, a good reputation in this space, not the Amazon sellers. I'm done with those people. But when companies, most companies, when I tell them my policies, they just ghost me because and that's the thing, like they want to, even though they want to send me the product, they want strings attached. And once I tell these companies, there are no strings attached. If you send me something, most of them don't want that. So they just ghost me and they never send anything, which is fine with me because honestly, I prefer, I prefer to feature products that I purchased and obtained on my own. Like I just prefer that, especially for reviews. I am not, I would never do a I will not do a sponsored review or a paid review. And I've kind of gotten away. Like at this point, I think the only types of sponsorships I would accept on this channel or the main channel are like more like podcast style ad reads where the content is separate from the ad read. And I've done that a couple times with So Tights. They sponsored a couple of my videos and they were like, the best to work with because they had absolutely no parameters. They're like, yeah, they didn't even tell me what to say. Um, so that was actually a really good partnership because they had not, again, I think the audience saw there was a clear separation between the content and the ad and the, the sponsor had no control over the content. What I have a problem with now with a lot of the influencer content is that the brand has some control over the content and that's what I have a problem with because if you're if you're see if you're looking up products and you're trying to research what to buy and you see the influencer if you see it's either sponsored or the influencer was sent the product for free you're like you really become distrustful of the content for for good reason 
And that's the thing, even if the company sends you a free product and doesn't directly sponsor the influencer, I'll be real, like, if you're not buying something on your own, can you really give a 100% authentic review when you didn't buy it? I really don't think you can, especially when you get to the more expensive products. If I got a, if I, like, this is an iPhone 13 Pro. If I got this phone for free, this was like $1,100. Is there any way I can give the same review as if I paid for this with my own money? No, there would be no way. This is an expensive product. And if I got an expensive product for free, it would just, it really would impact the content I made about it because again, I didn't have to shell out my own money for it. And that's a big difference. And that's something that I've personally experienced since getting into like the influencer space is that there really is a difference between you paying for an item and you getting it sent by the brand. The other thing is that even if you, even if the video or the content is not sponsored, but the item was gifted, typically, like this is just my experience, typically the brand is like emailing with you. They're asking questions. They're like, when are you publishing a video on it? Like, it's like if you do like a video in exchange for getting a free product, the brand has some involvement in the content that a normal customer does not have. So that's my other issue with even the gifted products is that typically the brand, especially if it's an expensive product, the brand is going to insert themselves into your content, into the content production process somehow. And even if they don't do that, the influencer, even if there are no words said, the influencer knows deep down that if they tra- if they say anything critical about the product or if they're not like, like, you know, if they're, if they're totally unfiltered about it and there's some really bad aspects to the product, you can bet your bottom dollar that company is not gonna send you any more products in the future. You're off the PR list. They ain't inviting you on those brand trips. And, you know, they're not going to, like, play ball with you in the future. So even if there are no words exchanged on, like, what the expectations are, I would say a lot of influencers will end up kind of self-censoring just to preserve their relationship with the brand. And that's what Marquez was talking about is that, and even Asmin Gold, is that a lot of these influencers are creating content for the brands and they're not creating content for the audience. And that's what I have an issue with. So it's been, it's been tough. You know, I'll, I have a channel with over a hundred thousand subscribers. And if I did a bunch of sponsored content, I'd be making probably double the money, but the content would be much different. The other thing you should know is that when you are doing any deals with a company, with a contract, all of the one, every single contract I have been sent by a company has had a non-disparagement clause, meaning I can't say anything negative about the company. So me doing these cricket videos, these craftsy videos, these brother videos, these domestica coverage, that wouldn't exist if I had a bunch of sponsors. Like, I can tell you that. And there's also a, like, a non-compete clause. Like, there's typically, like, a category exclusivity. So say I was using, say I was um, sponsored by brother, I couldn't use any other brand sewing machine in videos. And that doesn't work for me because again, I do a lot of videos and live streams where I am reporting on the industry and doing product reviews and using various types of brands. So I can't really do the category exclusivity thing where I use one brand of scissors only because I do, I review all different types and there is no way in hell I'm signing a non-disparagement clause where I can't say anything negative about the company. Because, again, say I was sponsored by Joann's, there would have been none of that Joann content. So that's where I, that's where I think a lot of the influencer marketing has sort of gone off the cliff. And one of the issues I have with a lot of the brands, um, I mean, this is this is happening with a lot of, brands in other spaces as well. But what I find is that brands, 
they want you to do, they want influencers to make reviews, dis, to make um, commercials disguised as reviews or commercials disguised as content. And even if they say, like I've had companies say, yeah, we'll send you this, you can say whatever you want. And when I say, yeah, I had some issues with it, they're like, no, don't put that out there. So even if a company says, yeah, we want our influencers to make organic content that's totally honest, they don't actually mean that. They say that, it's like lip service, but they don't actually uh, mean it. Uh, so yeah, I've had some, I've had some real frustrations with a lot of the brands in this particular space. And I think the other thing, and I've seen people kind of chit chat about this online too, is that especially some of the, um, like kind of with what that article was going into with Humane AI, um, like what, I'm sorry, but like what loyalty do I have to some random company? Again, small or large, you know? And I think one thing, one thing that a lot of the sewing community really likes about apps like Backstitch, which I've talked about, is that it's a place where people can leave honest reviews of indie pattern companies. And let's, again, I've noticed some of these indie pattern designers do not take criticism well. Even like constructive criticism, they take any remote criticism as being like cyberbullying or something. You know, but it's like, if people have legitimate criticisms or issues with the products and they're talking about them, one, there's nothing wrong with that. And two, I think that's, that should be taken by the companies we're talking about to make things better. You know, like if a lot of people are having an issue with a certain pattern, that company should not be like butt hurt by what people are saying. They should be like, you know what? Yeah, that is a problem and we're going to fix it. And I think that's what Marquez was getting at and what a lot of the folks in the tech world were getting at this week is that his bad review on that humane AI pin, the company should just be like, you know what? Thank you for the feedback. We're going to try to make improvements on this product. And I think companies in the sewing industry need to take more of that attitude as well. Instead of be like, I got a very passive aggressive email from the brother PR department after I released my brother's sketch videos. And I could tell they were not like super happy about, I could just tell by the tone in the email that they just weren't thrilled about what I was saying about the sketch. And I didn't respond to their email because I was like, I just don't see this going anywhere. I thought the email was kind of like, I thought they were just going to lecture me or something or be like, ah. So I just didn't, I didn't, I just didn't see the value of talking to them about it. Again, I'm an independent, you know, I'm an independent content creator. I don't have any loyalty to the brother corporation. I like a lot of their products. Again, I have a love hate relationship with the sketch, but it is what it is, you know? All right, let's read some comments and then we'll go into, uh, we'll go more into this. Oh my gosh, Carol's husband bought the humane. All right, Carol. Tell your husband to watch the Marquez Brownlee review. Because um, it's, yeah, he may want to, okay. Can he return it? <laughs> it seems like it's pretty bad. All right, Tara's in the house. Hello, Tara. I have only 4,000 subscribers and received a comment recently on an older video that from watching my video, the person decided not to purchase a Cricut and purchased a Silhouette instead. That's awesome, Tara. All right, Joelle says, influencers that get money for peddling products that they don't use, then act like they do and say they are the best. I've seen some of those. I've seen some of those for sure. Uh, that's why I appreciate that you bought the skitch with your own money. And you know what? I'm, I'll say this too. I'm lucky to be in a position where I can afford to purchase products for the channel. You know, I think that's awesome. And a lot of people, especially people with uh, smaller channels, are not in that position. So that's why I, I can also see the nuance in this situation because when you're a smaller influencer or a small YouTube creator and you're not making a lot of money from content creation, I can see why you would almost kind of need to rely on getting free products from brands you know, and I kind of just saw that early on, though, like when I was in that position, the brands would send you free products. I actually had to sign a contract once just to get free products. And it had like some crazy terms in it. 
I'll never do that again. But when you're small, you don't, again, you don't have a lot of leverage to say back to that company, no, I'm not doing that. Or I want to change this term. I'm not signing the non-disparagement clause. And I've just noticed that as you get, you know, as you kind of grow and get more of an audience, companies are a bit more willing to play ball with you in terms of the expectations. But yeah, when you're, a, and that's why I, I don't blame the content creators or the influencers. I actually put the blame on these companies for creating this type of environment um, to where we're at now. You know, like in a perfect world, I think brands, I think brands, again, if they are sending out free products, they should just send them out, no expectations, no contracts, you know, no like tit for tat. It should be like, hey, we're going to send you this. You do whatever you want with it. And I really respect companies that do that. I've had a few companies that did that. And you know what? I accepted. I said, you know, hey, I appreciate your, uh, you know, open mindedness and your like the fact that you're willing to put yourselves out there without any any expectations. I also think that I would like to see more brands doing sponsored content, do, do sponsoring more influencers without all of those restrictions. Like, again, if brother said, hey, we'll pay you, you know, I don't know, we'll pay somebody $10,000, you can do whatever you could trash it, and they actually meant it, again, I still would be like, whatever. The other thing I would think should happen is if companies are going to sponsor content, it, I don't think they should be reviews. Like, if Brother paid me $10,000 and said, hey, um, we'll pay you ten grand to just show how this product works or something, I don't even know if I would do that, but that would be a lot better than asking me to do a review. Like, if you ask somebody to do a video on, like, how a product works or to go over some of the features or, like, explain what it is, you know, maybe something like that. But I would also like to see brands get away from integrated content altogether where the sponsorship is the content and go more to that ad read style where the ad is separate from uh, the content. I also think it really depends on what kind of content you are creating. So I had talked a while ago to the ladies of uh, Cow Butt Crunchies Cosplay, Regan and Scone. They make amazing cosplay creations. And I think their type of content makes a lot more sense for sponsorships because they're not doing reviews on the product. They're just make it like, so if they were to be sponsored by like brother or something and they're just making like cosplays, like, yes, they're using the machine, but at the same time, the content is focused on what they're making and it's not necessarily the machine. So I do think it really is highly dependent also on what, what kind of video it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, for instance, like, okay, so I have this like, um, all right, so I've got this pink cutting mat right here. You know what I mean? So this cutting mat was made by like uh, U.S. Art Supply. So if U.S. Art Supply said, hey, I'd like to sponsor your live streams, you know, we'll send you a cutting mat and you just have it in the backdrop. I also think that's like less problematic. Again, if it's just like something that you're, you know, or if like this microphone company wanted to sponsor me, I think that would be like, because the microphone is not the content, I think that would be like not as big of a deal to me personally. So I think those types of sponsorships, in my opinion, are like less, you know, kind of like, I don't know, I, I would say that that would bother me less as a consumer than a, than say, um, Apple spot, which I don't even think Apple sponsors anybody because they don't need to, than Apple sponsoring me doing a review of the iPhone, you know? But, like, if it's like, hey, you know, we'll send you a microphone to use during your live streams and we'll be the sponsor. Like, that's the thing. Like, the microphone, the microphone is not the, you know, actual content. So, I, I think it depends on what the content is. But I don't, I really don't like, like, if, if I see a review is sponsored or the person got it for free, I actually click off the video. I'm like, I'm not watching this because this ain't real. And that's the whole point of Marquez's video is that 
you know, again, and we're seeing a lot of reviews like that. And you're seeing more and more on like TikTok, Instagram, everywhere where it's like a paid review or like a paid feature. And you're like, this ain't, this is not legitimate, you know? So that's what I, I don't know. So again, some people might not like what I'm saying. That is okay. Uh, this is my opinion. And this is based on being a YouTube creator for the past, uh, for the past eight years. And just the experiences I've had with companies and just what I've dealt with is that these companies, they want, they just want influencers to make commercials for the brand and the brands don't care about the value to the audience. That's my honest opinion. Most of them don't. And that's one of the reasons I actually did do the sponsorship with SoTites is because I felt like we had the same shared values and they weren't like that. So I was like, okay, this is awesome. So that's like the one company I've been able to do a sponsorship with in the past like five years. I don't think I've done a sponsor. Like I, before that, I had not done a sponsorship in like, I think since like 2018 or something. This has been a long time. And it's based on some like kind of negative experiences I had uh, with some of these companies. So if you guys have any questions about that, I will like... I'll let it rip here. I will let it rip because I, I'm kind of fed up with the way things are going. Uh, but when you think about it, like, who are we? Like, who, if someone does, like, a sponsored review or even a review where you didn't pay for the product, who is that helping? Like, it's helping you because you got a free product. It's helping the brand. But, like, is it really helping the audience? And at what point do you cross the line between being a review and being a commercial for the company? Like, I don't think the brand, like, if you're doing a review, the brand should have absolutely no involvement in the content itself. And that's why I do have a problem with the people getting the gifted products, because the brand at that point does have an involvement in the content. And I don't think you should be doing review videos. I, I just don't like review videos that are sponsored or with free items. May, you know, I guess that's a hot take. I don't know.